The Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft Oil, that wonderful cooking and salad oil, presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, transcribed, by the Kraft Foods Company. There's a special reason for buying Kraft Oil, that wonderful salad and cooking oil, the very next time you go shopping. When you buy a bottle of Kraft Oil, your grocer has a gift for you. It's something the whole family will enjoy. I'll have the details in a few minutes, but meanwhile, jot down Kraft Oil on your shopping list. Tie a string around your finger, do anything you like. Just be sure when you go shopping to get that special gift when you buy Kraft Oil. Well, I've been with Mr. Gillsleeve and Leroy a long time, and Bertie's seen a lot of changes around this house, and the biggest change is in Leroy. I let you in on something. That boy's got a girl. His uncle don't know it, but that boy's got a girl. <laughs> and if all their telephone talks was laid end to end, they'd reach to Alexander Graham Bell. Hello, Bertie. Oh, Miss Gilson, you scared me. No, I did? You usually come in the front door, but today you came in the back door. <laughs> well, I put up the car. Yes, sir. But I didn't expect you at the back door because you usually come in the front door. Uh, Bertie, if it'll make you feel better, I'll go out and come in the front door. Oh, you're in now. Yeah. Well, I have to go make a phone call. You can't make a phone call. The line's busy. Oh? I was going to call the grocery a half hour ago, but the line was busy. Bertie, we don't have a party line. We got a party on the end of it now. Leroy on one end and Miss X on the other. Who's Miss X? That's his new girlfriend. The latest and the greatest. Yes, yes. What could they be talking about this long? I don't know what she's telling, but she sure knocked him for a loop. What's this? I went through the parlor a minute ago, and he had his legs draped over the back of the couch and his head down on the coffee table. That's what I call knock for a loop. Well, I'll go get him off the line. Yes, sir. When you get through talking to your girl, call me so I can call grocery. Yeah, all right, Bertie. And after I must get your gate, I'm going to straight home and call you, Wendy. No, he has head under the coffee table. I never saw anybody stand on his head while sitting on the couch. Now, tell me what you've been doing since I left you. You just left her. Leroy. I'm listening to Wendy. Well, tell her to wind up the conversation. Okay. Yeah? What's that now, Wendy? Uh, Yeah, sure. Uh Uh-huh, good idea. You always have good ideas. Young man, get off your head and terminate the conversation. Gosh. I gotta hang up now, Wendy. Call me back. Bye. My boy, I don't believe I know this Wendy, do I? No, I don't think you do, Unc. Who is she? She's keen. Well, undoubtedly. Where did you meet her? One afternoon we were going to the basketball game in Dinky's car, and I met her on the running board. (laughs) On the running board? Yeah, we couldn't get a seat. You want to see your picture? I got it in my wallet. Yeah, I'd like to. Look here. I got it wrapped in cellophane. Yeah. How about that, huh? How about that? A very pretty little girl. Yes, indeed. Is that all you got to say? What should I say? Well, get with it, Unc. When a girl gives you her picture to put in your wallet, that's real out of space. Oh? We're going steady. Since when? Well, we were over at Sheila's house the other day, and we talked it over doing the shag. Oh, my goodness. Can I have some new pictures taken, Unc? Wendy wants one for her wallet. You will see. I have to make my phone call now. I'll get it! I'll get it, Bertie. I got it. But... Hello? Oh, hi, Wendy. Oh, I'll never get the phone. I better go write a letter. Hello, Petey. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. What can I do for you? 
Well, I didn't have anything to do this evening, so I thought I'd drop in and chat. You might give me a couple of cigars. Yeah, well, do you want the 1954 model? Well, what's the difference? There's no difference. They're the ones I didn't sell you in 53. <laughs> yes, yes. I thought you had a new model. Well, that's an idea. The cigar people could do like the automobile manufacturers. Might boost the cigar sales if they came out with power smoking and dual exhaust. It... <laughs> Dual exhaust. Hmm. You blow the smoke out of both ears. <laughs> Phoebe, what's come over you tonight? No, I just feel a little frisky. Our new parrot talked back to Miss Peavy today. It did. Taking quite a chance, wasn't it? No, yeah, it's new around there. <laughs> One of these days, the feathers are going to fly. Yeah, how do you get along with the bird? Oh, it has my admiration. I'm here to tell you. Stood right back on his hind legs and said to Mrs. Peavy, Swab the deck, you lover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that parrot must have been in the Navy. Yeah, it doesn't watch out, it'll be back in the Navy. <laughs> oh, all right, forget it. I better charge you for those cigars. Oh, I see you have a new ledger. Yeah, I call this my faith, hope, and charity ledger. Oh? Takes a lot of faith to charge the things to some people. And I hope they pay, and if they don't, I'm on charity. Yeah, that's about right, I... Say, is that Leroy's name on your ledger? Yeah, Leroy has a little account now. Why does he need an account? Well, same reason you do, Mr. Gildersleeve. He doesn't always have the money with him. He frequently brings a little girl in here for sodas. You mean Wendy? Yeah, they make quite a couple. When they started going steady, Leroy celebrated by buying her lipstick. A lipstick? Pink Dream, I believe they called him. Pink Dream. That boy's going to give me nightmares. Mm, it could be. Well, I don't like the idea of Leroy concentrating on one girl at his age. I don't see how he does it. They're all so cute. Yeah, I'll have to talk with the boy. Some of these youngsters get serious about each other too early. Oh, well, I wouldn't worry about Leroy. They're too young to realize the obligations they undertake. Leroy will have to watch it, Peavy. Well, let's help him. His present obligation is only $2.30 if you'd like to take care of it. Oh, put it on my bill. But gosh, Unc. Now, Leroy, I can't understand why you want to spend all of your time with one girl. Well, I don't understand why you spend most of yours with a school principal. Miss Henshaw is a very intelligent conversationalist. That's the reason. Leroy. Okay. Guess I better go give her back her picture. Well, that's up to you, my boy. I want you to remain friends. I have other girlfriends. There's Miss Tuttle, Miss McKinley, May Kelly. Well, you've got a lot of girls, but you always concentrate on one at a time. You well. You know how it is, don't you, Unc? When I get around Wendy, it's pretty hard to concentrate on anything else. Well, that proves you should see other girlfriends. When I'm around other girls, I don't see anybody but Wendy. Maybe you need glasses. Oh, for corn's sake. No, my boy, you're resisting this idea. Yeah. But I'll tell you what I'll do. You've been wanting one of those sweaters at Hogan Brothers in your school colors. Oh, boy, I'll say. All the kids are gone on those. Well, if you'll divide your time a little bit, you may go right down and pick out yours. No kidding? You tell them to charge it to your old uncle. Swell, uncle. I'm going right down. Be seeing you. Yeah. yeah, Gildersleeve, you're so good handling children, you should have been the old woman who lived in the shoe. Boy, was I lucky. The last sweater in my size. It feels good, too. Cold today. Uh-oh. Here comes Wendy. Well, if she wants me to walk with her, I'll tell her I have something else to do. I'll just be indifferent. Hello, Leroy. Hi, Wendy. I didn't see you after school. Well, I had something else to do. I missed you. Yeah? Well, I had something else to do. Oh. Do you want to walk me down to the corner? No, I'm going the other way. Something wrong. I'm just going the other way. Well, goodbye, Leroy. Wendy! Yes? I'll go your way. I've got to go down to the corner and catch my bus. We can wait on the bench. Okay. 
Isn't that a new sweater you're wearing? Yeah, I just bought it. I've always wanted to wear a boy's sweater. Yeah? Lots of girls do. Yeah, some guys are stupid enough to give girls their sweaters. No, oh, I don't mean I'd wear just any boy's sweater. Sit down by me, Leroy. Well, I guess I can wait here until your bus comes. What I mean about the sweater, Leroy, is that I'd rather wear a boy's sweater than a girl's sweater. But I wouldn't dream of asking a boy to let me wear his sweater. Well, you're different from a lot of girls anyway, Wendy. I'm glad you think so. I think so. Anyway, your sweater wouldn't fit me. Your shoulders are so broad. <laughs> They're not so broad. They look broad to me. Well, I got muscles, if that's what you mean. I just love a boy's sweater in our school colors. Purple and orange. They're real cool. Yeah. Well, I'll have to be leaving you in a couple of minutes. I see my bus coming down the street. Oh, gosh, we just sat down. I haven't seen you all afternoon. Don't I know it. Can't you wait and take the next bus? I could, but... But it's awful cold sitting here, Leroy. Well, uh, maybe you can wear my sweater until your bus comes. Won't you get cold? No, I got broad shoulders. think I'll have any more trouble getting the phone. No, sir? Well, Leroy's decided to spread himself around. He isn't going steady anymore. Oh, that's news to me. Well, I made a little deal with the boy. You know the slip-over sweater he's been wanting? Yes, sir, in the school colors. Yeah. I suggested that if he didn't see so much of Wendy, he could have the sweater. In other words, you pull the wool over his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when it comes to handling these things, I'm pretty cagey. Oh, yes, sir. Hold out. Hi, Bertie. Hello, my boy. Hello, Leroy. Boy, your teeth are chattering. <laughs> yeah. Leroy, where's your sweater? My sweater? Well, gosh, Unc, I met Wendy at the bus stop, and she was cold. And... She's wearing your sweater? Well, gosh. Oh, my goodness. Bertie, what do you think of that? I think somebody else pulled the wool over Leroy's eyes. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. A few minutes ago, I told you about a gift you'll get when you buy Kraft Oil. And here it is. When you buy a bottle of this wonderful salad and cooking oil, you get a free package of Jolly Time Popcorn. That's only part of Kraft Oil's sensational gift offer. In addition to your free package of popcorn, you can also get a certificate at your grocer's worth $3 toward the purchase of a whirlwind electric corn popper. If your family likes popcorn, and what family doesn't, take advantage of this remarkable bargain. Your package of Jolly Time popcorn contains enough to make up to three quarts of crisp, tender corn. Jolly Time is the popcorn that's guaranteed to pop every single kernel. When you pop corn with lighter-bodied Kraft Oil, you're popping it the quick, never-fail way. Just pour a little Kraft Oil into your popper or skillet, turn on the heat, and your popcorn is ready to serve before you know it. Fluffy and light, without a trace of oil in it. Wouldn't some popcorn taste mighty good while you're listening to the radio? Better pick up a bottle of Kraft Oil at your grocer's tomorrow and get your free package of Jolly Time Popcorn. It's right on the bottle. And also look for a separate certificate worth $3 toward the purchase of a whirlwind electric corn popper when you buy Kraft Oil. I know my uncle is upset with me because I gave Wendy my new sweater. But it's been so long since he was my age, he just doesn't understand. When you're sitting on a bench with your best girl waiting for a bus, and she shivers with a cold, and 
looks at you with those big, warm eyes. Leroy, I don't understand you. I don't understand myself, Hunk. You know, I've seen boys who just play in girls' hands. But I've never seen as big a hunk of putty as you. Oh, gosh. Want some more hot cocoa, Leroy? No, Bertie, it's getting hot enough in here. It's going to get hotter, young man. I thought we made a bargain. If you got your sweater, you were to stop going steady with Wendy. She's a nice little girl, Miss Gilsey. Leroy, get out your wallet and show him her picture. Yeah, I've seen her picture. Now, I'm not objecting to Wendy. It's the principle of the thing. This going steady is not a healthy situation. Okay, Uncle, okay. I've heard it. I've heard it. Leroy, don't get on your high horse. I'm the one who's on the high horse. Too many horses around here. Bird is going to get out before the stampede. <laughs> Why, when I was your age, Leroy... Times have changed, Dunk. Grover Cleveland isn't president anymore. <laughs> Leroy. Hello, everybody. Oh, come in, Marcy, my dear. Aren't you going to say hello, Leroy? Hi. What's the matter with him? Well, I've been forced to take a hand in Leroy's little romance. He wants to go steady. Unky, any girl who wants to go steady with Leroy, encourage it. What? We love him, but those ears. <laughs> Who's the lucky girl? Wendy Howard. Oh, I know Wendy. She's darling. Well, there's time enough later for that going steady business. Of course, I'm not going to be unreasonable about it. I'm just going to forbid it. Hello, Miss Marjorie. Hello, Bertie. Unky, I remember you forbidding me to do things, and I was all the more determined to do them. Yeah, oh, Marjorie, you were a model girl, and it paid off. Now you're happily married to Bronco. If you'll think back, there was a time you forbade me to go steady with Bronco, and look what happened. You well. Yes, sir, she married him, and now she's got twins. <laughs> yeah, but you must admit Leroy is a good deal younger than Marjorie was when she first talked about going steady. Oh, I don't know. I wanted to go steady with the milkman when I was seven. Uh, uh, Marjorie, this is serious. Well, it might get to be serious if you insist on making such a big thing out of it. Why don't you be casual about it? Ask Leroy to invite Wendy over. That's a good idea. You mean encourage them? It'll blow over all the sooner. Use your head, Unky. By George, I will. You know, I'll do anything to have Leroy turn out the way you did. Oh, isn't he nice, Bertie? Yes, ma'am. He's going to see that Leroy has twins, too. <laughs> Come in. Sure. Looking out your window, I see. Yep. Can't do anything else. Might as well just sit and look. Well, I've been doing some thinking. Why don't you invite Wendy over? Are you kidding? No, no, no. I mean it. Get her on the phone. On the phone? Now I've heard everything. I'm withdrawing my objection to your seeing Wendy. Honest? Honest. Oh, boy, I'll phone Dinky and tell him to get his girl, and I'll get Wendy, and we'll get in Dink's car. Oh, and... wait a minute. Yeah? Just because you met Wendy on the running board is no reason for staying there. I want you to invite her over for dinner. Just the two of you. Oh, Unc, you don't have to do that. No, I want to. You'll have a fine evening together. But, God. No, no, no. It isn't any trouble. Just leave everything to me. Glad to do it. Well, that's nice of you, Unc, but... No more than I should do. Wendy's a fine little girl. You may see her as often as you like, my boy. Gee, you're swell, Unc. <laughs> I'll rush over to her house right now and tell her. Where's my old sweater? Leroy, don't lose another sweater. <laughs> More ice cream and cake for anybody? Yeah, how about it, kiddies? Wendy? No, thank you. Leroy? No, I'm up to here, Unc. Well, I want this to be a nice evening for you two. So I got a lot of ice cream. Oh, yes, sir. We're loaded. It was a wonderful dinner, Bertie. Thank you, dear. Yeah. Now let's get going. Where are you going? 
We've had dinner. We might go over to Wendy's house. No, my boy, you can't just eat and run. I've planned your evening here at home. Why, George, I believe in making the home an attractive place for the young people. We might have another game of Scrabble. No, brother. Of course, this time I'll let you two play. I'll just watch and help out with the words. I don't believe I care to play Scrabble anymore. Would you, Leroy? No, full stomach. (laughs) Well, whatever you say, this is your evening. Why don't we retire to the parlor? Well, if you all decide you want more ice cream later on, we load it. Thanks, Bertie. Leroy, you and Wendy want to sit on the couch? Yeah, that's where I usually sit when I have a date. Oh, gosh, I don't know. I hadn't thought about it. I'll just sit here on the piano bench. Oh, do you play, Wendy? Not as well as Leroy. Yeah, well, I guess we better eliminate the piano then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was a good dinner, wasn't it? It was wonderful. Yeah. Yes, sir, by George, that was a good dinner. Divine. Yeah. Gee. Well, perhaps I'd better leave you two. Goodbye, Unc. You know, I'm not going anyplace. I'll be in the den in case you want me. Oh, don't worry about us, Mr. Gildersleeve. Go wherever you like. Yeah, anywhere at all. Uh, Leroy, why don't you show Wendy the family album? Family album? He was a cute baby, Wendy. I'd like to see the album sometime. Well, the album's right there on the table. I brought it down from the attic. If you'll excuse me now. Sure, I'm glad to, Unc. Your uncle sure is doing everything he can to make us enjoy the evening. Unc's okay, but a little corny. Oh, Leroy. The Corner Music Store has two new sides by Eddie Fisher. Yeah? He's solid, man. What are they, 45 or 78? Who's 78? Oh, hi, Unc. We were talking about recordings, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, Leroy, why don't you get out your new recordings and play them for Wendy? Oh, they're all over at her house. We could go over there. Yes, why don't we? Well, that won't be necessary. I have any number of records here. Oh, grown. Uh, Let's see. In a monastery garden? Yeah, that doesn't sound very lively. Never mind, Unc. Oh, here we are. Here we are. I'm always chasing rainbows. Is he kidding? No, he isn't. This is a favorite of Irene's and mine. Yeah, the sweetest music this side of heaven. Well, I'll leave you two alone now. Good, Unc. Go ahead and dance. You can't hurt the rug. We couldn't possibly hurt it dancing to that tempo. Hey, we're in luck. It hit a groove. We'll have to take it off. Gosh, it's too bad we don't have some of our own records. Leroy. Yeah, Unc? If that side's no good, you can turn it over. Thanks, Unc. We decided not to play records. No? Well, I've been saving this little surprise for later, but... More surprises? Well, I borrowed Judge Hooker's movie projector, and we'll show some home movies. Home movies? Some of the stuff we took up at Honeysuckle Lodge that summer, Leroy. Yeah, I'll go fetch it. Leroy, what's that expression your uncle uses when things go wrong? You mean... He... That's it. He... Any more trouble with this reel? <laughs> Sorry, I got the first one in backwards. <laughs> now, there's the bridge leading to Honeysuckle Lodge. Now we have a close up of some honeysuckle. You see it? <laughs> I shouldn't have tried to take it from the car, I guess. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Here we are unloading the car. <laughs> Later on, you see us loading it again. <laughs> a lot of interesting stuff in between. Oops. Film broke. <laughs> Pretty brittle after all these years. <laughs> uh, turn on the lights, Leroy. Leroy, the lights. Confounded, Leroy, where are you? Something wrong, Mr. Gilsley? Uh, Bertie, will you please turn on the lights? Yes, sir. Leroy, if this is your idea of a joke, I... there's nobody here. Leroy, 
Wendy! Look like Leroy's gone with the Wendy. <laughs> you. Right, George, you try to cooperate with a couple of youngsters and they disappear. And I'm just curious enough to want to know where they went and what they're up to. Kids their age going steady. I knew it'd lead to no good. Say, there's Dinky's car tied to the lamppost in front of Peavy's. Wonder if Leroy's in there. Think I'll pull in and take a look. I don't know. If Leroy walks out in his own home movies, he must be pretty serious about this Wendy. Well, I gave him his chance. Hello, Phoebe. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. What can I do for you? Look at the teenagers. Is Leroy here? Yeah, he's back there. And the kids have taken over the back booth. Yeah, at least I know where he is. Phoebe, why do you allow them to play music in your drugstore? Well, they bring in the record player, and that brings in business. I may put in a jukebox. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Look at them. They don't even realize I'm here. No, they're real gone, Mr. Gildersleeve. Who's the girl splitting a soda with Leroy? It isn't Wendy. No, she's another one of their crowd. And I went out of my way to have them up home for dinner, thinking they wanted to be alone together. Well, they do like to be alone together with their own group. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I worry too much about Leroy. <laughs> you old worrywart. <laughs> Come to think of it, that isn't bad music. <laughs> Care to dance, Phoebe? No, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> the Great Kill the Sleeve will be back with us again in just 30 seconds. Don't miss Kraft Oil's sensational popcorn offer, now being featured at your grocer's. Kraft makes this offer to prove to you that the most wonderful way to pop corn is with Kraft Oil. Next time you're shopping, get a three-ounce package of Jolly Time popcorn and a certificate worth $3 toward the purchase of a Whirlwind electric corn popper. Both are free when you buy a bottle of Kraft Oil. Gilsey, you seem pretty happy with the way things turned out with Leroy and Wendy. Yeah, nothing to worry about, Bertie. In Peavy's last night, he was sharing a soda with another little girl. He's not going steady. He even got his sweater back. That's nice. Well, I better go phone the office. Yes, sir. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah, okay, Mary Ellen. I'll walk you home right after school. Uh oh, Leroy's on the phone again. Uh, what's up, Mary Ellen? Mary Ellen, huh? Good. He's playing the field. Well, sure, you can wear my sweater. If the shoulders aren't too broad. He's trapped again. <laughs> Good night, folks. Greg Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman and is an NBC Radio Network production. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White. Is transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Lillian Randolph, Mary Lee Robb, Luanna Patton, and Dick LeGrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Easton saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of the great Gildersleeve. What goes into your favorite sandwich? Maybe it's roast beef or savory baked ham. Whatever your favorite, the perfect meat sandwich needs the perfect mustard. Kraft prepared mustard. For when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. You can take your choice of two kinds of Kraft mustard. Mild Kraft mustard is smooth and delicately spiced. Or if you like your mustard with extra pep, try Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Keep them both on hand and keep everyone in the family happy. Next time, get Kraft prepared mustard. <laughs> Now,
now play You Bet Your Life with Groucho on the NBC radio network. Mm. 